Pacific is Australia's transcontinental train journey from Sydney to Perth, traveling over 4,000 kilometers in a 65-hour trip. At least there was a lot of legroom, but that was about the only comfortable part of sleeping in a chair three nights. Early on the first morning I saw the most wildlife. Mobs of kangaroos and even a few emus were hanging out near the tracks in the New South Wales bush. became more habitable the closer you got to Adelaide. Adelaide, the capital of South Australia and the fifth largest city in Australia, is a city of rose gardens, parklands, cricket, fountains, and rowing. Only wish the bus tour let us walk around instead of talking about architecture for an hour and a half. Day three, we'd entered the Nullarbor Plain, a vast treeless expanse in northwest South Australia. The town of Cook used to have several thousand residents, but now is mostly deserted as the main highway is nearer to the coast and the railway isn't used as much. Creepy to see abandoned basketball courts and condemned houses in the middle of nowhere. Shortly after Cook, we crossed into Western Australia at a completely arbitrary border of the Nullarbor Plain. It bothers me that one state is South Australia and the other is Western. It'd be like having South Dakota and Northern Dakota. Where's the consistency? Here in Coolgarley, at the Super Pit Gold Mine, which is a massive open cut mine, over there, they mine out of 24 hours a day, every day of the year. Since you can't really see anything, I'll cheat a little and show you a picture of it in the daytime. Kalgoorlie had quite the Wild West reputation in its day, and a few brothels from that era have survived, but business didn't look very good. reached the other pocket of arable land in Australia, traveled through the Avon Valley, crossed the Swan River, and completed the crossing of a continent by train. Sure, I could have gotten a four-hour flight for about the same price, but where's the adventure in that? <laughs> 